no better way to ring in the new year than with world-class sports car racing from the world center of racing, Daytona International Speedway. Welcome to 2024 and welcome to IMSA, the International Motor Sports Association, the sophomore season for the VP Racing Sports Car Challenge. The grid absolutely packed. 33 cars entered this weekend, the largest field ever entered for one of these events. Daytona International Speedway, the world center of racing. Take a look, 12 turns, just over three miles and some great passing areas. Turn one, the International Horseshoe, West Horseshoe, heavy braking into the Le Mans chicane and you better get a good run out of there because it is a long run through Speedway 3 and Speedway 4 to the start finish line and the checkered flag. Absolutely packed facility this weekend and the weather Perfect. Just a few clouds in a very blue sky, cool temperatures, scout days here, and the scouts have turned out in droves, and it's great to see the enthusiastic crowd, young and old alike. They're in the grandstands. They are ready to go. Welcome, everyone. Brian Hill, Jeremy Shaw. We've got the call, and Jeremy, I'm looking forward to 2024. I mean, what a season we're going to have ahead of us. Look at the starting grid there on the left side of the screen. Yeah, it's so, it's so cool to be back racing again, particularly at Daytona International Speedway. Beautiful weather. It's absolutely gorgeous. But boy, it's chilly. It's 20 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. So times in uh, in qualifying this morning were pretty quick. We saw some good lap times, much faster than yesterday. We've got 20 GSX cars uh, split among seven different manufacturers. We've got 10 LMP3 cars as well. Uh, all but one are Ligier JSP3 chassis, just the one Duquesne. So people talk about sophomore slumps, whether that's in college sports or whatever you want to call it. Second season for VB Racing Sports Car Challenge. I see no sophomore slump here. This is the largest entry we've ever had for a VP Racing Sports Car yeah. Challenge race. Yeah, it's growing, and we've got new, new young drivers coming to the series. That's what's fun, both in the LMP3s and in the uh, the GSX as well. Look at the front of the grid in the LMP3 cars. Uh, two guys at the front there who are new to the series, just 20 years age of age, both of those two on the front row. Stephen Argacani, he's been out of racing for a year, concentrating on his family. Uh, 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 tax business in California, uh, but uh, he's back again now and on the pole position in his debut uh, for the MLT Motorsports car in the Ligier chassis. Alongside him, Marco Kasich from Canada. He also hasn't done a lot of racing, hasn't rate driven anything at all in the last, me last eight months, but to two very talented youngsters. Uh, on the second row of the grid is uh, Alex Kirby, who's been around the sport a little bit, little bit of little bit of time and alongside him on row two in number 77 Brian Thenus he's been around sport a long 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 time he's a 60 years of age but done a super job to qualify in the fourth position ahead of Cody Ware who's got experience in all sorts of different sorts of cars uh, in the uh, sixth position is uh, car number 23 that is uh, Miguel Via Gomez from Ecuador making his debut in this championship. Lance Wilsey, he's been around for a while. Mirko Schultes in the eighth position on the grid. He's from Germany but has won in the LMPC category in the past here in the Ipswich Tech Sports Car Championship. And then George Stakos uh, and rounding out the field in the uh, LMP3 category is uh, Scott Locke, who's making his return to racing after uh, many years out of it. Well, I think that's the cool thing about VP Racing Sports Car Challenge. Two different classes, sprint format, 45-minute race. You talked about the prototype category, the LMP3-based machines, which we saw race in WeatherTech last year, but we also have GSX. Yeah, and the GSX is the same cars as GT4s that will be racing in the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series as part of the IMSA schedule over the full season. Uh, we've got seven different manufacturers here a broad range of cars we've got a McLaren we've got Porsches we've got we've got uh, we've got Mercedes we've got BMWs Toyota Aston Martin and Ford uh, and a lot of new cars there on the pole position in GSX is Michael Cooper he's another guy who's got lots of experience in these cars did a really nice job in qualifying this morning to put that number 55 baby bull racing Porsche on the pole position in GSX alongside him another veteran of the sport is Mark Miller for Thay's competition uh, that's a very much a last minute entry for Mark Miller but he's on the front row of the grid in kind of a 37.
row two of the grid in GSX is uh, Greg Leofouge. He's been around, uh, lots of experience, of course, as well, driving a BMW for Stephen Cameron Racing, and then making his debut for both himself and the team, which is uh, Zabok Simpson Motorsport, Jackson Lee in car number 66, another Porsche on the outside of the second row in GSX. So the lights out on the BMW pace car, the LMP3 field is there, but Jeremy, the GSX field is supposed to be right there on the rear wing and the front row is, but I still see cars coming out of Speedway 4. We'll see if they get stacked up before they get to the start zone. There's a look at the two different classes and they leave very little space in between. The prototype should be faster. And what we've got up front right now, Jeremy, two very inexperienced drivers on the front row. Aga Kani in that blue and silver Ligier jumps in the throttle early, the number six to the lead. And it looks like a good start by both classes. Yeah, it does. Nice and clean there. Brian Thienus on Whoa! that red and white car. Looking to the outside, two cars get tangled up at the first corner. One of them is the guy number 51 that started in the fifth position. That's Cody Ware. A lot of experience in NASCAR, of course. He's not used to turning left there. Well, yeah, and you think about it. These tires cold about 54 degrees ambient temperature right now. You need to get them up to temperature. Cody Ware has no time in an LMP3 car, and I think it just caught him out a little bit. Those cold tires, cold racetrack, that turn into the infield there. He has raced here at Daytona in the Rolex 24 before. Let's take a look. Look for the 51 up high. Just I think he was helped, was he? I think so. Take a look. The blue and white car, fourth in the sequence. No, it just uh, looks like on a down change of gears to me, Jeremy. The rear locks and around he goes. Yeah, I mean, cold tires have had just a one warm up lap, and uh, the tires are certainly not going to be up to optimum uh, pressures or temperatures when he goes into turn one. So, you know, that's just one of those things he's going to learn with the experience. As you say, not much experience in LMP3 cars, but he has driven LMP2 cars. In fact, he won the uh, Asian Le Mans series uh, a couple of years ago in an LMP2 car. And look at the battle here for the lead. Your pole sitter on the left, Agakani, tries to hold it. Nothing doing. Good move there, great move. Alex Kirby there, really, uh, really good move there to take the lead from Steve Agakani. I think Agakani, a little bit cautious there, uh, and he's uh, paid the price because he's now uh, got uh, the Marco uh, Kasich uh, alongside him as well on the outside, uh, heading around NASCAR three and four. And this is the kind of racing we expected to see, especially with these young drivers up front in the LMP3 category. They were going to charge from the drop of the green, and that's exactly what Alex Kirby has shown us. A little bit of a draft. These cars don't draft very well because of their aerodynamic signature, but Kirby with a good run pulls to the inside. Aga Kani tries to defend, and Kirby almost loses it but holds on. He's got some experience in these cars, both in the WeatherTech championship and here in VP Racing Sports Car Challenge and that was a power move under brakes there into the Le Mans chicane. It, it was yeah I mean Alex Kirby he did uh, four of the races five of the races uh, last year had a couple of podium finishes for the Performance Tech Motorsports team uh, so he's certainly building that experience here as uh, Marco Kazik goes a bit wide there at uh, the, one of the horseshoes uh, but uh, as he tries to hold on to that second position. But uh, yeah, that was a great start there for Alex Kirby from Newport Beach in California. So on the opposite coast for him. Not be, quite a bit cooler today than he's used to as well. Now, you and I talked to Stephen Cameron, who runs two cars in the GSX category, but he was talking about how the track temperature here has huge effects on how the car handles. It was considerably colder this morning for qualifying, Jeremy, and I'm wondering if some of the teams made that guess on the setup and the temperature and which direction the car would go. And perhaps they guessed incorrectly as Kasich coming back on Agakani there in to the Le Mans chicane. Gets it done, Kasich with a great move. Yeah, so the, the pole sitter down to third position now, Stephen Agakani, the youngster there from uh, Los Angeles, California. And uh, he's, he did a super job in qualifying this morning. It was a really good lap that he turned significantly faster than any of the times yesterday. But so he's struggling in the early stages of this race compared to those two cars around him. One, of course, is Ligier. That's out front. That's Alex Kirby. And in second position now uh, from Canada, from uh, West Kelowna, in West in BC, is Marco Kasich. All right, let's go to GSX, where your pole sitter <laughs> trying to get back by. You see the Porsche slide on through. That's Michael Cooper, but Gregory Leofuge up top in the blue and orange BMW. Is he going to get it done? Mark Miller had the lead coming around the tri-oval, but man, 
This is going to be a great fight all race long. Three very, very talented GT drivers right now in the top three. Yeah, they really are. And lots of experience between them as well. And uh, but, uh, but but Mark Miller, really, he hopped in the car yesterday morning with the original intention of just doing a shakedown on that uh, phase competition Mercedes. He did race it a couple of times last season in a Michelin Pilot Challenge, but wasn't expected to be racing this weekend. The opportunity arose, however. Uh, he was told to go out and qualify the car this morning, which he did, and did a fine job in qualifying as well to put it second on the grid. And as we can see there, straight line speed appears not to be the Mercedes AMG GT4's uh, forte on this. Uh, oh! That's not gonna work. Don't hit anything, he doesn't. Makes up for the mistake. That's Kasich that we talked about, was having a great run. He just got way too deep into turn one. Yeah, a bit too enthusiastic there on the brakes, but his is, it ends up being three wide and then not three wide because the, clearly that Mercedes doesn't have the straight line speed of the, either the Porsche or the BMW at that point in the race at least. And what you'll see is the GSX cars, the GT-based cars, have better drafting capabilities than the prototypes, and I think we see that right there. And you're gonna see, I, I believe, these positions change on a regular basis. Mark Miller sitting in Eddie Colleen's seat had some licensing issues, and so he wasn't able to drive this weekend, but they wanted to get that car out there, make sure they represented the Janaid Family Foundation that's on the side of that Mercedes AMG, and Mark Miller couldn't pick a better person to drop in the seat, could you? No, that's right. Now, with experience with that team uh, in this car, uh, he's from the same state as the team is based as well, that would be Michigan. He's from Holland in Michigan, the team based on the outskirts of Detroit. But uh, it's great to see that team back again. There was the intention to run two cars here. Unfortunately, the second car for uh, Jonathan Woolridge, a young Canadian, didn't work out for this weekend. But uh, good to see that team you know, making, making good progress. And here with uh, two cars here and one in this race, and very much in this race, in the third position at the moment. Brian Till and Jeremy Shaw with you from the World Center of Racing. Daytona International Speedway VP Racing Sports Car Challenge. The first IMSA race of 2024. It's a good one in GSX right now. Michael Cooper in that multicolored Porsche out in front. Then the BMW of Gregory Lafouge. Mark Miller in his green Mercedes AMG. But who's joined the party? Another BMW. That's Patrick Wilmot. What an eye opener Patrick and his team were last year when they showed up here at Daytona. Jeremy's small team, they had big dreams. They came to Daytona and they put on quite a performance all season long. They've got a new BMW that they picked up at the end of last year and they're running well. Yeah, super cool. That split decision motorsports team based out of Tennessee. They're, they're racing in the memory of a good friend of that team, Rob Farley, who was killed in a road crash ten, over, over 10 years ago now. But Patrick Wilmot, uh, he was talking to him after qualifying this morning. He wasn't happy with himself uh, in that qualifying session, just didn't get it together. He, he told me, but he's, uh, he's right in the mix now. He's you know, within, what, a second or so of the leaders in that fourth place BMW. New color scheme this season. Car looks really sharp, doesn't, doesn't it, in that Genie Garage Doors uh, color scheme. When you talk about the different cars in the class, we talk about two BMWs. Let's talk about two Porsches. Michael Cooper leads aboard his Porsche right now, and then newcomer, the rookie, Jackson Lee aboard the number 66, having a good run in the top five right now. And this is Jackson's first race in an enclosed car. That's impressive to me, good performance. Yeah, he, he did a couple of, uh, of WRL races last season, I think, in a, in a, I think in a BMW. Uh, so he has had one or two yeah, experiences in this sort of car, but not, not at this sort of level, that is for sure. Uh, and this new team, uh, which is Abok Simpson Motorsports, which is uh, Stephen Simpson, of course, still driving, hasn't retired as a racing driver. Uh, originally from South Africa, based now in Indianapolis, and Matthias uh, Jabok, uh, they put together this team over the winter. They're running uh, one car here this weekend in the VP Racing Sports Car Challenge, also two cars in the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series, which will make its uh, first race of the season next weekend. And this is what Jackson Lee wants to see. The top four in front of him kind of having a go at each other. That's going to allow him to close in a little bit. He's got that Melvin and Brent Simon Complete Cancer Research Center on the side of the car, Comprehensive Cancer Research Center on the side of his Porsche. And that really brings great attention to, I think all of us have been touched by cancer. We don't know anybody who hasn't been, whether it's you personally or a family member or whatever. And it's great that they can represent that 
here at the Speedway. Right now, Michael Cooper representing Porsche Well out in front of GSX. Yes, but here comes the BMW of uh, Gregory Lear who's looking to the outside. Michael Cooper keeping that inside line going into the Le Mans chicane, pretty much closed off there, so nowhere around for Greg Leaf, who's this time around at least, but those four cars at the front of this field pretty much nose to tail. Jackson Lee, who uh, is definitely the tallest driver in this oh, race, yeah. at uh, six foot, well, he says, I think he says six foot four at least, I would say. I have to really look up to him. Uh, and he's, you know, he's, he's still a youngster, of course, is, uh, is, is Jackson. Uh, just uh, 21 years of age and uh, a real talent, I think, in the sport being the younger. Standout baseball player in high school, but hey, got the racing bug lives uh, in Indianapolis. Yeah. Would you? Not, why would you not? Uh -huh. and, and you're going to see this battle back and forth. This is what I think is cool about this series, though, Jeremy. We have drivers of all different experience levels. Right now, I'm watching four of the best GT drivers around right now battling up front. But you've got these other young drivers like Jackson, like we were talking about. Same thing in the LMP3 category, where you've got some experienced drivers like Brian Thenis in there who've been around for a long, long time, and others of these young drivers, Alex Kirby, Steven Agakani, his first prototype race, showing you not only what is happening out, but what the future might be as yeah. we look forward to things like WeatherTech. I, you and I talked to Steven earlier today, and he was saying, you know, yeah, his eyes kind of lit up when we talked about LMP2 and the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, and he goes, it's really where I want to be. And, this is that stepping stone yep. to other IMSA series. It is the first step, absolutely right. There is our overall race leader, the leader in the LMP3 category, Alex Kirby, in car number seven for Performance Tech Motorsports, with behind him, trying to track him down for MLT Motorsports, Dr. Mike Thompson's team, based out of uh, out of Georgia. It's Stephen Arcani, the pole sitter, last time around. He set a new uh, fastest lap of the race, a one minute 45, 0.532. That's about a half a second only outside the lap record that was set last year last year by the season champion Joy Garg, who's stepping up this season, by the way, into the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. So good early pace there from Arga Kani, and he's trying to close that gap to Alex Kirby, the two front two uh, first two cars, number seven leading from number six of Aga A Little bit of a gap back to Brian Thenis in third position, who comfortably leads the bronze cup categories for, let's say, more experienced drivers. Now, Alex Kirby, that we saw there in the white seven, the prototype, has more experience in that type of car than Stephen Aga has. Aga trying to chase him down, and you look at the lap times, and Stephen Aga fair bit quicker than Alex Kirby that last time by. We'll see if he can close down on him. Meanwhile, this has not changed at all. It's, I mean, every time you look at it, maybe one car is in a different place, but the four of them are all together as one through four in GSX head into the International Horseshoe. Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? A little, little, little bit of a gap back to Jackson Lee in the uh, fifth position. And then behind Jackson Lee is Jesse Lazar in the um, the uh, MIA McLaren Artura GT4. That's kind of a 21. We haven't seen him yet, but we might do because he's setting a string of really fast laps. Last time around was uh, about a second. Far. There is that McLaren, that ACAS Beautiful. McLaren, kind of a 21. It is a gorgeous car, that new McLaren Artura. Made his debut here last year. The, the team struggled with that car for most of the season, but did win the final Michelin Pilot Challenge Series race of the season at, uh, at Road Atlanta, part of the Petit Le Mans weekend. And Jesse Lazar only qualified 10th, I think, this morning, but he's moving up steadily in this race, consistently setting fast lap times as well. That's Jesse Lazar in car number 21. Whoops, there's uh, Greg Leaf, who's running right up high on the banking, coming down the back straight away. And Jesse Lazar knows how to win it. Oh, yeah. The Daytona International Speedway. Oh, yes. He got a Rolex 24 win, I believe, in 2017. That's true, too. Look at the draft. Look at the draft work. The 87, the 67, I should say. The Toyota Supra up there. A little push, a little shove. The Autotechnic BMW, the second BMW in the shot there. This is a good run a little bit further back. and. The 19 looks a lot like the 43. Their team car is out of the same stable. Sean Quinlan behind the wheel of that 19 BMW. And then the 25 BMW in there as well. Good stuff. Yeah, that's Mark Brummond in that car. And then on the outside, uh, that red Toyota is uh, Eric Thompson making uh, his debut in this championship in car number 67. That's a car run by BSI Racing, uh, run by uh, Shea Holbrook. Uh, 
based right here in uh, in Daytona Beach. And uh, Eric Thompson, he, you know, he's done some club racing in the past, but nothing to this level. He's got a, a really good head on his shoulders. Had a nice chat to him about an hour ago, and uh, he was. Yeah, he was pretty comfortable yesterday after the first two practice sessions, but felt there was more speed to, to, to be found. Spent two hours last night on the simulator uh, at uh, Fliss Performance right here in Daytona Beach, along with the team's driver coach, Andrew Carbidell, and he picked up nearly three seconds of lap time. Steven Agacani closing down on Alex Kirby, albeit little bits at a time, yeah. like a tenth, a tenth and a half of a second per lap. We've got plenty of time to go, 30 minutes to go, but here are the decisions these drivers are gonna have to make. And Stephen Aguicani talked about it, he just experienced it, and that is different class traffic, and he just had to work his way through some GSX traffic right there. Yeah, and before too long, he's gonna have a whole big knot of traffic to work his way through as well. But Alex Kirby, he's just turned his best lap of the race in the leading car, car number seven for Performance Tech Motorsports. So he's getting faster and faster. We've got exactly 30 minutes to go in this race. So we're just a third of the way through and uh, plenty of time here. But uh, he's got a, a handy lead there at the moment. It was half a second as they crossed the line last time around it's, it's a fraction more than that now it's a good first sector there for alex kirby he's got to keep his head down keep his focus don't worry too much about what's going on behind him just focus forward particularly when he catches this uh, this next group of gsx cars ahead of him on the racetrack now gsx across the line for another lap or was this three laps ago it doesn't really matter it looks yeah. exactly the same jeremy this is live but it's the same order. And think about what's going through each of those drivers' minds. If you're Mark Miller in the back, what I think he's seen is he doesn't have the straight line speed that he needs. So how does he try to get to the front? Problems for the 26, the Autotechnic BMW? That looks like, I'm thinking some kind of either suspension or tire on the right side. Uh, Chris Tasker making his debut in the championship this weekend. He did some Lamborghini Super Trofeo events last year. Uh, looks like a puncture perhaps on the right rear. Yeah, that car tire's coming apart. Slow down, Chris, because you yeah. don't want to call too much more damage to that car. There is another race, of course, tomorrow. And this is not the 26, this is the team car, the 25, but there's a little argy-bargy, a little push, a little shove. That's the 45, that bright yellow Aston Martin. Scott Blinn, who's having an absolute ball, his good friend Brady Ber Berman is out there with him as well. They're racing together, having a good time. And that was just kind of, I don't think that was intentional, but it was a little bump there from behind by the 25, Mark Grumman into the back. I'm sure there might be a, a wave or some type of a hand signal <laughs> as they head down into the International Horseshoe about, hey, that's enough of that. We don't need pushing and shoving. You may even get a warning from race control on that. But right now, the question is, Steven Agakani, the second of the prototypes of the shot, the silver and green, number six, What's he learning right now? What's he learning about watching Alex Kirby go through traffic? Okay, how did he do that? What can I do? What can I do to get there, be there at the end, and win my first prototype event? Yeah, and for Aga Carney, I mean, he's not really used to multi-class racing. He, you know, he's raced in uh, in Lamborghini Super Trofeo, he's raced in the Italian GT Championship, but not had uh, uh, much experience in races where the two classes have very different performance envelope, envelopes. I mean, the LMP3 cars are about 10 seconds a lap faster than the GSX cars. So that's something he's going to focus on. Alex Kirby has more experience of this sort of racing and, of course, in these cars because the four races he did last season. But it's going to be less than half a second as they cross the time, cross the line this time around. 27 minutes remaining, 10 laps in the books, 0.286 of a second, the official margin between them as they cross the start-finish line. The other interesting thing is for Steven Agacani, cars that he is used to driving, the GT4 cars, GT3 cars, traction control, any lock brakes. Traction control is on the LMP3 based machinery, but they use it very, very little. It, like a number one, maybe even a zero setting, turn it off. The car does not have an anti lock braking system. So when push comes to shove, literally and, and figuratively, perhaps later, that braking zone is going to be a challenge for him, more so than Alex Kirby. He understands it. And with an aerodynamic car like this, Jeremy, the braking levels change, right? From top speed 
to as the speed bleeds off, you've got to release brake pressure as your downforce goes away. Indeed so. I mean, you know, they, they, are, they, they do make their speed very different, make their lap times in very different ways. But it's a really nice job there by Alex Kirby, working his way through this group of what was initially five GSX cars. He's got through most of them really, really nicely. He's going to catch two of them heading into the Le Mans chicane here. One of them is that, uh, that bright red Toyota of Eric Thompson. Ahead of him is Sean Quinlan in the uh, orange and blue BMW. But uh, again, Kirby there, I think, just slowed the pace a little bit going into the Le Mans chicane to yep. make sure he made a really good exit. Heads up driving from that uh, from Alex Kirby. And that's exactly what I was going to say, Jeremy. What I saw there was the experience of Alex Kirby in multi-class racing going, hey, I'm going to back off of these guys a little bit in a space that I know that my competition can't do anything with it so that I can get the run off the Le Mans chicane and get past these GSX cars in an area where it most benefits me. Yeah, and uh, here's this uh, four-car battle still continues for the lead for GSX, but look who's behind them. Not too far behind him. He's car number 59, Luca Mars, in that core competition. Core Motorsports uh, Ford Mustang GT4, brand new car this season, uh, brand new Ford Mustang this season, and he's closing in on this four car battle. There he is, just about a second or so behind is the youngster Luca Mars. He was too young to race in this series last season. He's still only 17 years of age from Sewickley in Pennsylvania. Uh, he uh, started off karting at the age of five, moved into the uh, into road racing through the Lucas Oil School of Racing, and then into the MX5. Uh, Cup Series as well, so good bit of experience. Race last year in the Michelin Pilot Challenge, trying to get some more experience here this weekend to get ready for the start of that Michelin Pilot Challenge Series season, and he's closing in on those leaders. And just before the start of the race, I sent his team owner Dean Martin a text and said, "Is Luca racing today?" Because there was no lap time shown for qualifying, so we were like, "What's going on? Did the car get withdrawn?" And he responded, "Yes, he's racing, but we have to start last." They were underweight, three and a half kilograms. So what, a pound and a half? A little more than a pound and a half? Uh, the other way around. Other way around, isn't it? It's, uh, it's yeah, yeah, double yeah. it. So uh, it's uh, seven, or eight, seven or eight pounds. No, so. not, not, a, not a tremendous amount, but enough that, hey, you get sent to the back. He started dead last, and he goes, it's a new car, it's a fast car. I think we can finish fourth or fifth today. And here are the two leaders coming up towards the stripe one more time. And Naga Khan, he's got a bit of a draft here on Alex Kirby. But Kirby trying to keep that inside line. He's going to try and make Aga Khan go to the outside. He's going to make a pass in turn one, which is awfully difficult to do. Just about halfway uh, through this race now. So plenty of time still to go. And lots of traffic ahead. There is that, uh, that McLaren uh, of uh, Jesse Lazaro that they're coming up to uh, put a lap on now. Not, not a battle for position, of course. Jesse Lazar falling back just a little bit, uh, and he held up uh, Aga Khan just a just a, a fraction on that lap. But uh, meanwhile, uh, ahead of them, that Ford Mustang now is right with the uh, Patrick Wilmot BMW car number 88. Top five together in GSX, and the overall leaders looming in their mirrors. So it's the leaders closing down on the class leaders right now. Next car in line for Alex Kirby in the white number seven. It's going to be Luca Mars, and that's your fifth place runner in GSX. And first through fifth are now all together. Here's another one of those not of cars. Interesting the line that yeah. Leofus takes around he, Speedway one and two, that high line. He doesn't want to give anybody a draft, I think. He runs right up there to high, high against the wall. There's no way anybody can tuck it. Well, no way anybody wants to tuck him behind me, because if you do tuck him behind him, the, the aero wash might t take you into the wall there. These are not NASCAR uh, stock cars. These are very, very different cars. And uh, going into the uh, Le Mans chicane again, uh, heads up driving once more from Alex Kirby, leaves a little bit of a, a margin there, and then pounces on the exit, goes past one of the GSX cars, goes past the other one. Leo Fuji, of course, you know, he's got lots of experience, both of those two, Michael Cooper as well, they came to the inside line. The LMP fast LMP3 cars around the high line coming off NASCAR Turn 4. Look at Leo Fuji, when Aga Khani went by, he tried to slot up just behind him for just a second. Yeah. If it's just a half a second that I can get a little draft off of this prototype, I want to use it and see if I can get away from my competition behind me. But for Aga Khani, what a great job Kirby did. A good fortune involved as well. He was able to slot a GSX car between himself and Steven Agakani in the braking zone of the Le Mans chicane the last time by. That's given Kirby a little bit of breathing room, but with 21 minutes to go here at Daytona, he knows that the car behind him is quick. Agakani closed down on him once before. 
he can do it again. But remember, you and I talked to Steven this morning, and we were asking about the drafting in the prototype category, and he goes, it's really not there. I was behind a couple of cars, and I couldn't do anything with it. Is that not what we just saw? Well, maybe. And look at their relative lap times at this point in the race. Argacani has set the fastest lap at a 1 minute 45.532, but Alex Kirby's fastest lap is uh, only about a tenth of a second slower, so very little difference between those top two, two uh, cars in terms of pace at this stage in the race. Meanwhile, that battle in the GSX, Leofu still has the lead. Michael Cooper uh, on the bottom line going around uh, NASCAR's one and two. The BMW of Leofu is high, and high, wide, and handsome, and he holds a good. Uh, good momentum going down the back straightaway. In third position, it is still Mark Miller in the Mercedes. And then uh, it's uh, Brian Thienus who's coming through in the LMP3 car and bringing with him Cody Ware, who's closed in and has just heard his best lap of the race in car number 51. Cody Ware back up into the top five after the problem that he had earlier on locking the brake, that spin into turn one. You know what I love about BP Racing is it's got a great audience, and audience with people like former champion Jack Baldwin, who just wanted to inform me that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So exactly I appreciate that, Jack, and thanks for watching. Down into turn one, Cody Ware trying to find a way around Brian Thenis. It's going to be easy when you outdo your braking zone, as Brian Thenis just did, and Cody Ware slips through and now picks up one more position. Brian will be kicking himself for yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> he likes, uh, likes to be holding off the, the younger drivers, and uh, yeah, he won't like that at all. He'll look back on that and uh, grit his teeth. Problem for the 25, Mark Brumman. Just a little bit high and offline, and you run out of grip very, very quickly. These Michelin tires are good, but when you get out there to where there is no grip on the racetrack, there's a problem. And speaking of problems, big time problem for Robbie McWilliams. That's at the Le Mans chicane for the number 22, the Aston Martin Vantage. Contact with the tire wall there. You see the fender laying out there and you can see, I don't think those are his marks that we see, are they? Oh, it's I can't imagine more, that they would be. A lot more asphalt there, isn't there, than there used to be? Oh, there's a lot more asphalt. Everything behind that curb, driver's left, used to be grass. So a lot more asphalt there. Those tire marks that are there appear to not reach a wall. The 23 pulling behind the wall. My question is, did Villa Gomez and Robbie McWilliams have a coming together there? Perhaps the two different class of cars, different speeds into the Le Mans chicane. Not sure how McWilliams got there, but it's interesting Villa that Gomez. those two cars off at the same time. Yeah, Villa Gomez was running in the fifth position at Calumba 23, the uh, Abro uh, Ligier, run by that uh, team Escuderia Abro. They're based out of, uh, well, they're, they're all from, uh, from Ecuador, but they do have a, a team base in Miami, and uh, Miguel is going to be racing uh, this series the full season long. He generally races with his brother in, in all sorts of touring car races in South America. But it's Miguel who's going to be driving the car this season. He's been doing a really, really nice job. So that's disappointing for him to be out of this race with still 17 minutes remaining. But that battle Man. in uh, GSX is uh, is ongoing very much. So Luca Mars has got past Patrick Wilmot now up into fourth position and closing on Mark Miller. But he's got to be uh, had a couple of the the uh, LMP3 cars go through there. Uh, yeah, this is the battle for a position in LMP3. Lance Wilsey running fifth in that beautiful red, white, and blue stars and stripes, number 33. And now a problem, the BMW, or the Porsche off. Was that the leader in GSX? Was that Michael Cooper? It was. Cooper slid off. He was running second at the time. And you can see how busy it gets here when you get that LMP3 traffic coming through. Yeah. That uh, one slight mistake there for Michael is going to cost him a couple of uh, positions. Uh, but a super battle there between those three LMP3 cars Lance Wilsey, uh, Marco Schultes, and then uh, Marco uh, Kasich trying to make his way forward as well, having made that mistake earlier on yep. in turn one, working his back slowly in contention. He lost a lot of ground with that, uh, with that error. Now he's got these two veterans ahead of him. And uh, Mirko Schultes, he's quite a character. Uh, he's. Uh, <laughs> He's won races before. Uh oh. Uh oh, there's a full course caution coming out. He's won races before in the IMSA World Tech Sports Car Championship in the old LMPC category with Renga van der Zender, with the, for whom uh, he, he really, I mean, he really 
catapulted Gregor van der Zender into the big time in terms of his racing career. I think there's some pretty significant damage there for Robbie McWilliams on the right front. It looks like I, the steering wheel may be turned, but I can see that the right front wheel is askew. I can't tell if that's suspension damage or the wheel being turned to the left, but you see the right side mirror folded in on the car. You also see the hood back there and contact. Now I can see his tire marks into the tire wall there. That other set of tire marks, skid marks that are nearest to us threw me in the beginning from the angle. I couldn't see his, which are just behind the hood that are sitting there. And Robbie Williams, what a guy. I mean, very new to racing. Ferrari Challenge last year. He'll continue with Ferrari Challenge this year, but also into VP Racing Sports Car Challenge, coached by Matt Bell, who a name familiar, not the Matthew Bell, the British driver, hey. but this is the American Matt Bell um, around the series for a long, long time and will continue his racing this year is his coach. And, you know, I think Robbie McWilliams has the right attitude. He's a guy that comes from not a military background himself, but contracting work to the military, very thought uh, conscious, very process oriented and he's yeah. taken that approach to his racetrack very to his racing very process oriented he says i may not be the fastest right now but i will learn and i'll learn in a methodical way hopefully without a lot of mistakes unfortunately today there was one it seems yeah it would appear so and certainly his race is over and uh, there is the uh, number 23 car also uh, into the uh, pit lane uh, a good run it was for Miguel Villa Gomez, but uh, his race is over as well. Hopefully they can get that car out again. If not this afternoon, he's got one more race tomorrow as well for the first weekend in the VP Racing Sports Car Challenge of 2024. Brian Till and Jeremy Shaw with you from Daytona International Speedway. Race number one of not only the VP Racing Sports Car Challenge for 2024, but also for IMSA, all of their classes. So we get to start the season off. And for some drivers, not the way they wanted it to go. Robbie McWilliams has climbed out of his Aston Martin and walked over to the AMR safety vehicle. Good to see him out and walking on his own. He'll be checked out in the medical facility, as all drivers are who make contact with something on the racetrack. And yeah, the infield this weekend of the Roar, I, I love it for the 24. I mean, obviously, because it's, it's a completely different event. And a lot of the fans that are here this weekend will be here next weekend as well. But look at the tent city that is there of all the scouts that have come out for scout days here at Daytona. Yeah, there's a troop number from, can't see the number from St. Augustine, Florida, from all over the, the, the uh, certainly all over the state. I think probably some from farther afield as well. And it's a great turnout and lots of enthusiasm. I mean, they, I, rolled into the track this morning at 7.30 and they were they were streaming out of the campsite and in toward the paddock area to have a look around the race cars. Really cool. No, they weren't. It. They were streaming out of the campsite because it was cold. It was 41 degrees this morning. They were I, trying to go someplace yeah, warm. I, probably warmer <laughs> in the tent, though, than walking around outside. It was a bit of a breeze this morning. Boy, it was well, and chilly out there. I, I think the, the scouting organizations, all of them, yeah. do such a great job with our young people. They create a lot of the future engineers yeah. that, that we see, whether it's in the aerospace industry, like right across the street at Emory-Riddle or at Daytona International Airport, or the engineers that work here on the race cars. And uh, it's just a great organization. It's always great to see the young people here uh, at the Roar. And right now, what Alex Kirby did not want to see were the double yellow flags displayed at the start-finish line. I don't think any of them did. It's reset everything, and it's going to turn what was a 45-minute sprint into about a 10-minute yeah. sprint. Tires are going to cool down. For some of the teams and drivers, that might be a good thing. For others, they're going to have to try to get the tires back up to temperature. What you want to do is make sure, Jeremy, when the yellow comes out, you try to keep that energy in the tire by braking, getting that heat, keeping that heat in the wheel, which moves it into the tire carcass. Keep those tires hot. Those Michelin's need to work for you on the restart as you dive into turn one. True that. And uh, for, for Alex Kirby, I mean, the, the gap from the first, from his lead car to the second place car is about the same under caution as it was out on the racetrack, about, <laughs> about half a second. But of course, doing you know, nothing like the speed they were. But look, you know, he's, he's spent all this race. He, he made that move on the first lap. Brilliant move it was uh, to take the lead. Uh, and as we sh showed at the beginning, saw at the beginning of the race, he was fast out of the blocks. I mean, he was right into the groove right away. So he's going to be 
drawing on that experience now when we go back to green just try to hold off Agakani into the first couple of corners don't make any mistakes in the first couple of corners and give up Agakani a clean pass and then try to do exactly what he has done for the other you know 30 30 nearly 40 minutes in this race so far so you know, he, he knows what uh, what needs to be done all right speaking of what needs to be done let's go through GSX then you've got Lafouge out in front and it's his BMW then Mark Miller in his Mercedes, the Porsche of Michael Cooper is in there as well, and then the Mustang of Luca Mars. What is Dean Martin saying to Luca Mars, and what is the radio sounding like? What is Stephen Cameron saying to Gregory Leifouge up in front? I mean, the four different messages among the top four right now, what are they? Um, go for it. Oh, yeah, 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 don't, mean, don't, don't, don't hang around now. This is crunch time now with the less than to be, what, 10 and a half minutes to go uh, at the moment. So, uh, you know, there's going to be another... Mm, five, probably yeah, at least five laps to go in this race, possibly six. And uh, you know, just hit your marks. Don't don't do anything silly. But you know, for Leo Fuge, I mean, he's the, the top three drivers in this race: Leo Fuge, Mark Miller, and Michael Cooper, all hugely experienced. I mean, they got a lot of miles in all sorts of different sorts of cars. For the youngster Luca Mars in uh, in fourth position in that Ford Mustang GT4, you know, he's a youngster, just 17 years of age, so he's uh, still learning about. Uh, what he needs to get up to the front on a regular basis and finish up at the front. He's had some really strong results over the last uh, 12 months in this sort of a car, but this is a brand new car for this season, so he's still learning that. But it's been a fine drive from the back of the field in car number 59 to be up into the fourth position and right with uh, the three leaders ahead of him. In LMP3, then it's Alex Kirby and Stephen Agakani, then the top two. Uh, Cody Ware has moved himself up into the third position. We saw that a little while ago, ahead of Brian Thienus, uh, who leads the uh, bronze category drivers, just ahead of Lance Wilsey and Mirko Schultes, who are now right behind him on the road in fifth and sixth positions. And then the youngster, uh, Marco Kasich, in the seventh position in number 87. That's the car that started on the front row of the grid. Uh, at the beginning of this race, made the mistake in turn one. We're not going to go green this time. We've got one more lap under caution, so it's going to be around about seven minutes, probably only uh, remaining in this race. So probably yep. three laps, possibly well, probably four laps to go uh, uh, when we go back to green. Remember the conversation we had with Marco Kasich earlier about what does he expect from this weekend? What does he expect from today? So the 23 had the problem. Came to pit road. They were looking at the engine underneath the cover, obviously that car tried to go back out on the racetrack and then died again coming out of the pit. So they'll take the opportunity to move that out of the way as well. It's a shame he couldn't have just turned left and had enough power to roll it into that opening. Yeah, maybe maybe some sort of electrical problem there in that uh, Abro Ligier. Uh, they're gonna give it a tow and uh, just push it behind that wall would be the easiest way to get it going again. Otherwise, they'll, I guess they'll tow it down Oof. to the uh, uh, the East Horseshoe and then around right. uh, on the exit of that corner they can go behind the wall there but uh, it's going to be at least one more lap of caution. Shame for, for Via Gomez, he got the car running again as you uh, say. Actually it was on the, it's on the entrance to turn one wasn't it? I thought it was around the corner but I don't think it was. Yeah, there it goes now. Pit Lane is uh, to, the, to the left of where he is at the moment so not quite sure how he ended up where he did. <laughs> sure either and crew trying to communicate with him there's the exit of pit lane and they're going to try to get him behind the wall there so he must have gotten it out and around and then it died again coming back into turn one but he's talking about marco kasich and he said i want to do the best i can i want to learn i want to certainly i want to win that's always my priority when i go to the racetrack but i want to learn and i want to make sure that i get my points that collect my points for a championship and go home so what he's got to do now to me, Jeremy, is control those emotions. Yes. He's got the field stacked up in front of him again, so he knows he can pick up positions if he's quicker than they are, but he also knows he can't throw it away. And that's I think that's the challenge for all of these guys. Every point counts, and you yeah. can't afford to waste them by, by going for a gap that just isn't there. That's right. I mean, your last season, uh, Bijoy Garg was clearly the class of the field in terms of pace. But uh, Dan Goldberg kept him honest all the way through the season, and even into the last weekend, Goldberg remained right in the championship fight. 
uh, and uh, you know every point does matter. And uh, I was, we, were, we were both impressed by Marco uh, Kasich there this, this morning you know, with how mature he was and how he was looking at the bigger picture in terms of championship points. Of course, he threw it all the way down to turn one, <laughs> but, uh, but still, he, he, hey, he's in his long mind, way to go, right? he's in his mind at least. We're going to go green here with just under six minutes remaining, so probably just, uh, yeah, might get, might get four laps in. So they're in the restart zone now. The leader, Kirby, can go whenever he wants, pull the trigger. You cannot pass or pull out a line until the green flag is waved. It is out, and we are racing again at Daytona. Five minutes, 52 seconds to go. Kirby, a good run, passing all throughout the GSX field. Kirby with a good lead down into one. Is that Brian Thenis that's way down on the grass, or was that Cody Ware? Well, it, it, Thenis that was down there on the grass picks up the position. It was, because Lance Wills, I think, would have got a penalty for that jump. He jumped, uh, I think, a little bit too soon, got past Thenis on the outside, and Thenis got back underneath him going into turn one. So I think if he was deemed to have given that place back again, uh, Lance Wills, he might get away without a penalty. What a pass. What a move in GSX. Mark Miller to the lead now over Leofuge in his BMW. Miller with the Mercedes out in front. How does it happen? This is the LMP3 class. We'll see up high, kind of jumps. I think you picked that right. And look at Mark Miller makes a big move around the high side. Yeah, and as soon as the green flag comes out, you can go racing. So look at Miller, second and flag comes out. He moves, he's gone. and. Leobu's just being a little too careful there. Didn't pick up the throttle in time. Miller said, thank you very much. I'll have some of that. Yeah. So now is the, uh, Brian, he's made a great uh, first uh, section to this lap. Also, as Mark Miller put out a bit of a gap as they headed onto the banking ahead of that BMW. We've already seen the straight line speed of the BMW. And there is Ford Mustang as well. Speaking of straight line speed. Yeah, on, on uh, Michael Cooper heading down the back straight of Mustang up into third position. Miller, a little Briefly. twitch into the brake zone there through the Lamar chicane. He needs a great run out. He needs to lead into turn one. I think he's turning similar lap times, obviously, to Leofouge behind him, but he needs a lead when they get to the tri-oval. Otherwise, he ends up in trouble. The Mercedes just doesn't seem to have quite the top speed. And you look at the bottom of the split screen there, Leofouge around the high side. Miller, just a sit-in duck, drops back in behind him as NP3, Kirby, a little wide, a little high through turn one, could give Alex Kani a shot to close back in as they head into the International Horseshoe. Yes, it's a good race between these two at the front and, uh, and the whole field, the GSX it looks like as well, but uh, he, Alex Kirby keeping nice and clean there, concentrating on his lines. He was a little bit deep, in, did you say, into turn one, but didn't really seem to cost him any time. And heading through the kink and down into the West Horseshoe, looking in good shape now. Still mere two laps. Possibly through. I didn't see exactly the time as they crossed the line uh, to uh, what there is remaining in this race. It's a timed race, of course. Uh, but the uh, after 45 minutes is up. Next time they cross the start finish line, that'll be the check and flag. George Stakos kind of back into the clutches of that battle for third in GSX. He's kind of right there in the middle of it. Meanwhile. That, that lighter Porsche is 100 kilograms lighter is the Porsche compared to the Ford Mustang. Uh, so it's, it's good on the brakes there for Michael Cooper, but on the straight line, the Ford Mustang GT4 really gets into its groove and uh, probably likely fall past him again on the, being, on the banking. Same sort of thing between the Mercedes and the BMW out in front. It's the BMW that leads down the back straightaway. Yeah, the BMW with legs down the back straightaway. And speaking of legs, Stephen Agakani trying to use that great run off the Le Mans chicane to get by Alex Kirby. But as we said earlier, these LMP3 cars don't draft particularly well. So it's just whatever you got by running a better line, picking up the throttle a little bit earlier. Can he do it around the high side, breaking wheel to wheel into one? Nothing doing this time for Agakani. He's probing. 0 0.007 of a second as they cross the line. They touch. A, yes, they do. A lot Aga Kani's there got it. Kirby. Brilliant move. It was Aga Kani led across the line. Uh, I think there's going to be two laps to go, so it'll be this lap and one more uh, yep. in this race. Uh, but it was Aga Kani left, led across the line, but uh, Kirby had the inside line in turn one, got in a bit too deep. And it's uh, Aga Kani again who leads this race. Take a look at it. They went into turn one, and it looked like Kirby had the advantage. He gets a little bit loose, and Aga Kani does the right thing, tries to slide in there. 
and he thinks he's clear of him. They make a little contact. That's just good hard racing yeah, there to me. You're right, absolutely right. There, it's Kirby there. He just carried a little bit too much speed into turn one, ran a little bit wide on the exit, and allowed uh, Agakani to get alongside him and, uh, and make that move into turn two. Good move there from Agakani. Uh, a sl slightest of errors from Kirby. And just a little bit of damage to the right rear of Steven Agakani's Ligier, what we call the cheese wedge. I think one of the supports is broken and that bit of under tray kind of down on the right rear. We'll have to see if that affects the aerodynamics of it. It looks like it's lower than that that I see on the seven. Those chassis are identical, so it looks like it's a little bit lower. And really the biggest concern for me would be that right rear Michelin because the front splitter on these LMP3 cars we saw them make that contact right there, and it can be just like a knife. Right now, the right rear is staying up for Steven Agakani with two to go as he comes to the line. Yeah, and a good lead now for Agakani. White flag. White flag is out. Steven Agakani sat out, went to school, went to work in the family business in 2023, did not drive a race car. It's been over a year. He said, I wanted to come back I wanted to do something new, and I want to think about prototypes in my future. I think VP Racing is the way to go in this LMP3 car, and right now he seems to have learned a lot in a short period of time. So it does, and the Mustang also uh, showing its paces early. Uh, this brand new car out of the Multimatic stable for Ford Performance. And uh, the youngster, Luca Mars, up into second position now. He drives past Mark Miller. Uh, coming out of NASCAR three and four, he's ahead into second position at the start finish line. Now he's just got the BMW ahead of him of Greg Leofuge, but he's going to be hard, have, have a hard time catching and passing him, I think. Interesting to watch these different manufacturers. The cars kind of ebb and flow. The Mercedes AMG, obviously very strong in the infield. The car is good, as is the BMW. The, the, the Mustang? I don't think it's quite as good in the slower areas of the racetrack, mid-speed corners to high-speed corners. I think it seems to have a little bit of an advantage over the Mercedes, and certainly in those areas where you want it to handle the best, which is the straightaways, yeah. it seems very strong. Yeah, and here now uh, coming out of the Le Mans came for the last time, uh, Dr. Mike Thompson's MLT Motorsports Ligier, Stephen Agakani heads out of NASCAR turn three and four toward the checkered flag. Sophomore season of VP Racing Sports Car Challenge, the first checkered flag of 2024 IMSA competition belongs to Steven Agakani, VP Racing Sports Car Challenge. Agakani, a triumphant return to sports car racing. He does it with a debut win at no racetrack other than the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway. Here's the question, drag race. What does the Ford have? What kind of ponies or in that Mustang, the BMW out in front, he's gonna get a bit of a draft. Here he comes, Jeremy. What can Gregory Leofuge do? If you're gonna drop, drop down now, try to block him, but you don't wanna give him a draft. Can you do, use a little side draft to get yourself in front? Luca Mars, is he gonna do it? From last to first, Luca Mars wins at Daytona. Wow, 0 0.05, one of a second. I mean, look, that was brute horsepower, wasn't it? But uh, he had to get through the chicane to use that horsepower. And that's exactly what Luca Mars did. Got a great run through the Le Mans chicane and uh, takes advantage of that draft and drives around uh, Gregory Leofuge and takes that win. Point zero, uh, zero five one of a second. That's not very much. Half a car length. Look at that. Just <laughs> absolutely amazing. And for Leofuge, he's really kind of damned if you do, damned if yeah. you don't kind of thing. If he drops down, then he gives Luca the draft big time. You know, so you've got to think about when you're going to time that. And once he's down there, now it's a matter of, can I use a little side draft to kind of get up on him a little bit and move myself forward? And I just don't think he had the, the speed, the top speed in that BMW to get that done. But Dean Martin said, I think we can finish fourth or fifth. I think the yellow helped, right? We did have the one full course yellow that, moved, that, that got him a little closer. But that may have been that little stroke of luck that he needed to move him from fourth or fifth that they expected to the win. Steven Agakani, look at the fist pump inside the cockpit of that Ligier. Yeah, that's a happy young man uh, for Steven Agakani. I mean, look, what a great weight 
way to start the North American racing season in 2024. That was a tremendous battle. Both classes came down to the last lap. Yeah, there was a caution not long before the end, but that was a tremendous fight to the finish in, in both categories. Great job by uh, two young drivers there, 20-year-old Stephen Agacani, wins in LMP3 and 17 year old Luca Mars takes his first first victory in the GSX category and think about this we talk about the experience in VP running the gamut from yep. 17 years old to drivers who are well well into their 60s you and I are all right right and what I saw today was great respectful racing throughout the classes and throughout the different experience levels that's what we've come to expect of this and like I said just the sophomore season a VP Racing Sports Car Challenge underway right now. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That really was a great uh, way to start the season. We've got one more race for these guys, of course, tomorrow afternoon as well. But uh, the perfect start to the season and the perfect comeback for Stephen Agacani sat out the 2023 season. Uh, but uh, he comes back uh, in the best possible style. He had to play second fiddle for much of the race, but when he mattered, uh, there he was. He was right there to take up the opportunity when there's one slight slip that's all it took for Alex Kirby and it's Aga Khan who comes away with the win and what a run that was in GSX for Luca Mars. Great stuff, great racing throughout the two different classes. Siri said we want 12 to 15 cars in each class. Well they got more than that, 33 and we got great racing. The beautiful thing is we'll do it all again tomorrow when the green flag drops at 12.20 here at Daytona International Speedway. For Jeremy Shaw, I'm Brian Till. Thanks for joining us for VP Racing Sports Car Challenge. And there's still more to come. Welcome to the 2024 IMSA season. We'll see you tomorrow, everyone.